Thank you all for joining us. Um, again, my name is Lindsay Law. I'm the Engagement and Services Manager here at Autech at the University of Colorado Boulder. My pronouns are she, her. Um, just a quick note before we get started, um, live captions are available for this presentation. If you go to your toolbar at the bottom, you should be able to um, enable those there if you would like to hear us better um, or see what we're saying. <laughs> Um, and also, we will be recording this presentation. Um, it should be available on YouTube within the next, hopefully, week or two, I would think. So just housekeeping notes there. Um, a little bit about all tech, I think most of you are familiar. Um, we are all about languages and the faculty who teach them. We provide a variety of language programs, resources, and support to faculty teaching languages, as well as students and learning languages. Uh, today's workshop is all about incorporating chat, GPT, and Bing chat in language learning and teaching. Um, it's presented by Ashlyn Plaster, our Educational Services Coordinator at Autech. Um, on behalf of Autech, we thank you all for joining us today to discuss AI tools and their potential use in language classrooms. We ask that you remain muted while our host presents and use the chat to ask questions. We will have time to discuss after breakout rooms and exercises at the end. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Ashlyn. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, all right. so. Can everyone see, see my screen? A little quick thumbs up, yes. Okay, great. So today we have a few things um, as our objectives and a little bit of an agenda. So really I like to do these workshops for people to get a, a, a chance to play around with these technologies if they haven't had a chance to play around with them yet um, and to ask questions. And, and really it's a lot of just kind of like trial and error and see what works for you, see what you need these for, or what you could use them for, or if they're just like not useful at all, it's nice to just figure that out um, either way. So the objective for today is just, just kind of discuss and practice way, ways in which um, AI tools can help instructors and students um, in their language classes. And uh, for our agenda, so we're doing the intro right now. After that, I'll do a little demo on Bing chat and give time for everyone to kind of practice and play around with it. Then we'll do the same with Chad GPT. Um, and then we'll have a little bit of a discussion at the end um, to see what everybody thought uh, about these two and you know how which one, if if at all, if they can fit your needs in your classroom and, and in which ways, et cetera. So before we get started, um, I did want to talk about the differences between Chat GPT and Bing Chat. Let's see. Uh, so really they're they're kind of they're they're similar they're different so as you can see here so ChatGPT there's a free version of it or there's an uh, a paid version of it that costs twenty dollars a month and usually there's a wait list to join it and everything Bing Chat which is also called Copilot by Microsoft so I might say both names for it um, is free so and there's differences with the ChatGPT between the free and the paid version for instance the G ChatGPT plus you can generate images whereas with ChatGPT the free version you cannot generate images um ChatGPT plus can search the internet whereas ChatGPT for free cannot search the internet this means that it has information that's been fed into the model up until 2021 and so if you ask it about anything that has happened after 2021 it might give you a fake answer. It might just, again, these are models that are, or not again, I guess I haven't explained this. These are models that are guessing the next logical word in a sequence. They synthesize text. Um, they're not obviously thinking or reasoning in any way. So ChatGPT for free will just kind of, is, is good for producing text and th synthesizing text. Uh, whereas ChatGPT plus can search the internet. So it might give you a little bit more accuracy in that sense. Bing Chat does search the internet because it uses GPT-4 um, and it will provide you links after um, your search. Uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, it will provide links at the bottom of your search to um, that you can follow to see where, it, where it's getting the information from. As far as data protection, I wanted to show you all. So, just as a rule of thumb, I would say don't share any personal information with these that you wouldn't share on other social media sites or on the internet, things like that. Through the university, we can we have a co-pilot for included that you can log into with your CU credentials. And so this means that uh, university data, as you can see right here, right, there's some security features. User and university data and co-pilot chat is protected, would not leak outside the organization. Chat data is not saved. 
Microsoft has no eyes on access to it, and it is not used to train the underlying models. Um, however, it does say even with these protections, users should never enter confidential or highly confidential data into any AI tool, right? So with Bing Chat, we have a little bit of this protection if you're logging on with your CU credentials, whereas ChatGPT, you never really know. The information that you're putting into the model can uh, be used to further train the model. Uh, for language classes, I don't necessarily think that that, you know, as long as you're not putting any personal information in there or any student information in there, of course, I don't necessarily think that it would be a bad thing to say, hey, I'm, I'm working on this or that and I need this or that. But just to keep in mind that Copilot does have these extra security features um, in case that's something that people are concerned about or interested in. Um, I talked about searching the internet with both of them. Um, accuracy, I would say always check responses. The nice thing about, about Bing Chat is that it does provide you links at the bottom so you're able to see where it's getting their responses from. Um, but again, I think for language classes, if you're just looking for you know, give me ideas on a fun game or give me ideas on certain things, you don't necessarily need to check the accuracy. I say this more so if you are communicating with your students about um, how they can use it to practice at home or to ask questions or, or, or whatever it might be, to always check their responses and to evaluate these answers critically like they would evaluate any other answer critically, right? If you get information from Wikipedia, you're going to evaluate that answer and make sure that it's accurate and that there's something to back that up. So same idea with um, with these models. Uh, image generation, I touched on that too. GPT Plus can provide images, uh, but not the free version. And then Bing Chat will uh, be able to provide images. You just have to make sure you're in the creative conversation style. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, and then other differences, uh, ChatGPT is a standalone website, whereas Bing Chat is integrated into Microsoft and Microsoft apps. Um, with Bing Chat, you can change your language settings and you can dictate to it, and then it will read back your answers to you. So that could be an interesting way to kind of play with language. Um, whereas ChatGPT is a, relies a little bit more on text, there are plugins to talk with it, um, if that's something that you're interested in. And it's more conversational. Uh, than Bing Chat. Bing Chat is a little more like, here's the information that you asked for and here are the links, whereas ChatGPT will chat a little bit more with you. So I will show you what I mean by that in these next slides. I tried with both of them the simple question of, can you be my Spanish tutor, please? Bing Chat said, I'm sorry, I cannot be your Spanish tutor. I am not a certified or qualified teacher, and I cannot provide you with a structured curriculum or feedback on your progress. However, I can help you with some ba basic Spanish phrases, vocabulary, and grammar if you're interested, right? And then um, it provided links at the end of like, you know, you can try like Lingua, Preply, Care.com, Italki, right? Here's some resources if you're interested in doing more. Or again, if you were trying to ask it a grammar question or a vocabulary question, it would be able to help you. But it's not kind of having this um, back and forth conversation with me. Whereas when I asked ChatGPT the exact same question, can you be my Spanish tutor? ChatGPT said, certainly I can help you with Spanish learning by providing explanations, practicing conversations, and assisting with any questions you may have. Whether you're a beginner or looking to improve specific language skills, feel free to ask me anything related to Spanish and I'll do my best to assist you. And then it switched to Spanish and said, ¿Cómo puedo ayudarte hoy? And a translation, how can I help you today? And so I responded, I need to practice my vocabulary. Can we speak about Latin American geography? And then it responded, of course, let's talk about geography, right? And then it's starting to ask me questions about Latin American geography to try to engage me in a conversation. Um, so as you can see, they answer very differently to the exact same question, which is part of what I'm interested in exploring today. Any questions so far or thoughts? All right. So I will show you if you haven't used either of these or both of these, we'll have a little demo of how to access it. So for Bing Chat, you're going to go to copilot.microsoft.com and use your CU credentials to log in. Um, before we do that, and I will demo it, uh, I will talk a little bit about what it can do, right? So Bing Chat can generate quizzes, exercises, it can provide feedback and suggestions for improving language skills. Copilot can also adapt to different levels of proficiency and learning styles. 
um, and offer language material from various sources. It can answer questions about grammar or culture, which could be useful to students. Um, and then things to keep in mind with your prompt design. The, the really important thing with these technologies is you have to be as specific as you can be with your prompt. Um, you can tailor it and you can ask it to regenerate as many times as you need. Well, I think with Bing Chat, you have a limit of 30. But um, if it gives you an answer and you're like, mm, that's not quite what I was looking for, you can rephrase that same question. You can ask it, actually, can you give me that answer again? But this time, keep this other thing in mind. Um, so my suggestions are define your objectives for yourself first. What is kind of your end goal? And then figure out how to ask that in a very specific way. You can specify the grade level of your students. You can say they're beginner college students, or you could say they're high school students or, or whatever it might be. Um, you want to obviously specify your subject, your topic, any other relevant parameters. So for instance, if I type in college level beginner Spanish quiz on weather related vocabulary, I'm going to, I'm giving it a lot more information than if I just said Spanish weather quiz, right? So as much information as you can, as you can give um, relevant information for what you're asking. And then sometimes it might be helpful to, if you have a, a great, a bigger kind of project in mind to break it up into smaller pieces, maybe instead of asking for a whole uh, lesson plan, you can ask for an outline first and then delve into individual pieces of it. Or maybe if you're asking for ideas about a syllabus, again, you can start with kind of like smaller ideas and then build up to a bigger piece or, uh, or ask for an outline first instead of asking for a whole thing. Because, um, yeah, the first response that it gives you might not be exactly what you're looking for. So that's where asking follow-up questions or providing more context um, comes in. You can also tailor the length, say, okay, that was great. Can you give me a shorter version of that? Or can you summarize that answer, et cetera? Um, and these rules apply for both Bing Chat or ChatGPT. But what I think might be interesting today is at least one of your prompts, it would be interesting to try it in both just to see how they can, um, how they can, how they can be different. So let me show you, if you go to, I've got to move my little tool over here. If you go to copilot.microsoft.com, um, I can put that in the chat. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, so if you can, yeah, if you go to copilot.microsoft.com, you click on sign in, and then it'll prompt you with your Microsoft credentials. So here I'm just entering my colorado.edu email, hitting next. It'll ask for your password if it's not um, included in there. And then this is what it looks like. All right, so already it's kind of giving you some suggestions to start out with if you don't know what you're looking for. If you look here at the bottom, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see that it says choose a conversation style. You have the more creative side on the left, more balanced in the middle, and then the more precise all the way on the right. I do encourage you to try these out and see how they are different, um, how they give you different answers based on how, um, based on what you're looking for and you know how it differs. If you are looking to create images or to generate images, you definitely need to be on the more creative side. And you, you need to be specific about, please generate an image about X, Y, Z. Um, so, so this is what that looks like. And then exactly you would, here, I gotta move this again. Um, down here where it says, ask me anything is where you would type your prompt, uh, whatever it might be. I'm going to go to here again, right? Once I put you in breakout rooms, feel free to please copy and paste any of these if you'd like to, or come up with your own, right? So for instance, I'm just going to copy one and paste it just to see what we get. I am a, let's say, I am a Spanish instructor teaching a beginner class about, um, let's say, what am I teaching about? The weather. Can you please give me ideas for warm-up activities to practice weather-related? And I can't spell. Vocabulary, right? And then you would hit down here where it says submit, or you can hit enter. Again, like I mentioned, depending on what language you have it set to, you could use your microphone as well, right? And now it's going to take a few seconds to provide a response. I find that ChatGPT is a little bit faster than Copilot. Um, they're both pretty fast, all things considered. So as you can see, it's starting to spell out the answer um, and it's giving me suggestions and it's also including links, right? See, there's a link to slides, a link to Google form, to a Google form, 
a link to these maze games. And at the very bottom, I can see those links again. The other thing Copilot will do is it will give you maybe some follow-up questions if you're kind of stuck and you don't know what else to ask. Uh, maybe what are some com common weather expressions in Spanish or how do I teach the pronunciation of Spanish words? So you could also play around with following those or you could you know, ask a follow-up question or try a completely different prompt. This is your time to really kind of play with it. Um, so Lindsay is going to put You've had six people, so two breakout rooms? Two breakout rooms of um, three people. Or, yeah, an ex either two or three people groups would be great. So um, you'll have 10 minutes to play around with Bing Chat and discuss with a partner. You can decide how you do this, if you're going to talk as you go or if you're going to play a little bit, then discuss. Um, and, yeah, then we will get back and we'll talk about how it went and see if there are any questions or any examples that are worth sharing. Sometimes we can get some funny responses. So. Um, do we have any questions before we start? All right. Lindsay, are we ready? I think we are. All right. We will see you back here in a little bit. Um, Emmy and Mary, do you want to share how it went? Sure. Um... So Mary and I both teach in Spanish and we both teach uh, upper division courses primarily. So we were talking about some of the courses that we teach, we have students generate their own vocabulary list based on readings and things that they do. Mm -hmm. um, so we were talking about ways in which students could use AI to practice or like quiz themselves on their vocabulary that they're generating um, because that's something that I that we talked about that we're sort of like missing in those courses is they're generating these lists on their own. But then since each student has a different vocab list, how do we then use those lists later on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great way to use it. Um, what about Mona and Marita? Do you have anything to share? Any insights? Well, we were both very curious to see if uh, the the uh, robot could handle our languages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it Can it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there must be a lot written on, on in in our in that languages we teach. We I I you I mean we both did uh, use kind of a funnel approach. One first uh, had a prompt that was very wide and open, and then was kind of refined and refined and and got better and better answers. And, and uh, yeah, I was I was impressed with what it could do and so quickly. And I think it is also um, interactive in the sense that you can refine and you also. It, it it gives you ideas, um, so so uh, so it's not that you're just copy and pasting. You you also get to modify what whatever answers you get, like a, yeah. a good brainstorming session, right? Exactly, I agree. I think I at the very least it's a good starting point. It's obviously you're not going to like you said copy and paste everything and be like, okay, I'm done lesson planning. But at the very least, it's a good starting point, or it can be. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, so I'm curious to see how we do trying uh, ChatGPT next. So I'm going to once again demo how to access it. If you haven't created an account, you'll have to do that. Um, what can it do? We're again looking at similar things, uh, but keep in mind that it's a little more conversational. So maybe with ChatGPT, you can play around with, oh, can you pretend to be my tutor and have a little bit of a back and forth um, with the with the bot. So um, yeah, you can ask it to chat with you about a topic of your interest. You could ask it to generate a dialogue for you to follow along, um, which could be, again, things that can be used by students. In progress. Oh, was that us? Um, it can also create different types of language content for you to interact with. You can ask it to create a short story, a poem, um, code, which I don't know that, I mean, I don't code, but it can do that for you as well, a short essay. And then based on those, based on that text, you can ask it to generate comprehension questions or quizzes or um, other material that students can interact with um, about the text that it produces. Or you can give it your own text and then say, can you generate a quiz or a vocab list or um, again, uh, follow up questions, et cetera, exam questions. Um, it can also help you with writing, rewriting or summarizing your own 
language content. Uh, it can answer questions about grammar or culture, which could be useful. Once again, I do have to add my disclaimer here that it might not always be 100% accurate, especially when it comes to culture. But about grammar, and, and I don't, you know, my languages um, are more like represented, right? I speak Spanish and French. And so in my experience, I've asked, can you explain the subjunctive? Can you explain uh, passé composé or whatever it might be? And I've gotten uh, accurate responses. Different languages, I think you just got to see how how good it is at, um, at explaining different grammatical concepts. So I'd be curious to see what you have to say about that. Um, as far as uh, the prompt design, again, be specific as much as you can. Tailor and generate, regenerate as needed. Um, and so when we go to breakout rooms this time, I would like to see if you um, if you can try at least one of your prompts from last time, the exact same one, just to see what a different uh, if you get a different response and how it is different. Alternatively, you can ask for study techniques, pretending to be a student. You can ask for help designing a syllabus or a lesson plan, test questions. You can try to have a conversation with it. Um, ask it to generate a short text and comprehension questions. Again, remember to provide context. Um, and you can ask it to get to regenerate a, a, an answer again to better fit your needs as needed. I also have a prompt here in case you want to just copy and paste uh, my prompt. If you are, you know, some people are like, I can't think on the spot. So if you just want to copy and paste mine and start from there, that's also something that you can try. Uh, do we have questions before we get started on this one? Let me show you again how to, or not again, let me show you how to access it. So with ChatGPT, once again, if you don't have an account, you're going to have to create one and uh, sign up. But it just requires like an email and a password. For me, I'm going to click login because I already have an account. I'm going to type in my email and then, um, and then it'll ask for my password. And then that's what this one looks like. This one will... Um, yeah, this one will keep kind of like on the left side, you can see like the history of things that um, that you can ask for in the past. And then here again, you would copy and paste. So for instance, I'm going to copy and paste my prompt. Just going to put it down here again. Now, maybe this time I'll try. I'm a French instructor teaching a beginner class, or intermediate class. You can also be more specific with your student proficiency level. Can you generate a short text about um, grocery stores? And include a vocabulary list of 10 verbs with translations, as well as two follow-up questions to check for understanding, right? I'm going to hit down here or hit enter. And you can see it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit faster. Uh, providing that text and it's giving me and this is the free version by the way you can see up here that it's 3.5 so it's the free version and it's giving me a text in French here's the text here's uh the list of verbs with trans with translations they're numbered uh and it's giving me the translations and then follow-up questions what types of products can you find in a supermarket how can you pay for your purchases at the cash register right so I didn't read the whole text, but I'm assuming the answers are in there, right? So this is uh, an example of how you can use that one. Uh, any questions on this one before we go back to breakout rooms? All right, great. So Lindsay's going to do that. We'll do again another little 10 minute demo and I'll see you back here in a little bit. Welcome back everyone again. I think everyone's back, yeah. Who would like to share? Um, what did we? Any insights from this round? Um, well, I'll share this time from our group. So we asked it again for the more upper, like the upper division. But now we asked it for activities for the students to share their, like, to individualized, personalized vocabulary list. And it came up with a nice activity, which was like have them work together and share and talk. And they would need a pencil and a paper and. So it came up with, and then they would do this, and then they would create one of a variety of activities to share back to the class. So it came up with, at first it just told us, well, what about bingo? <laughs> and then, and well, Emmy was prompting it. And then she was like, well, could you give me something a little more advanced? And then it, okay. and it came up. And so it did come up with things that we didn't, in our previous conversation, 
we had already brainstormed those kinds of things. So it didn't come up with something different. Okay. Okay. So you got similar answers yeah. from both. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Anyone else? I'm curious as to how it did with um, with Arabic, for instance, or a, a less common, commonly taught language. Yeah, hi guys. <laughs> yeah, I think it was really impressive. Um, I was talking to Marete, and I I can share because I played with this. Do you want? Oh, was I still sharing? Sorry. <laughs> I can share. Um, I like that. Uh, I asked it to give me most commonly used. Uh, vocab in media and it was really nice to give you a vocab list and then I asked it, how did you get this vocab and then they answered uh -huh. me with algorithms and stuff uh -huh. and then I first I asked the most commonly used words um, and they give me a bunch like 100 um, wow yeah it generated the text for intermediate reading uh, and the funny thing one time I tried to challenge it for dialects how would you say my daily routine in Egyptian Arabic? How would you say it in Moroccan Arabic? Mm -hmm. And they did. I mean, they give me the same thing and then they would change the diet. It was it was really good. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad it's useful even for... Yeah, because yeah, you never know. So, I mean, there are so many languages on this planet and I'm sure <laughs> it's not like this with every language, but I'm glad it is uh, with Arabic. Any other... Uh, Thoughts? Are there ways in which you can see yourself using these in your classroom or encouraging your students to use them on their own um, or or not either way? I mean, I guess I get so for the Spanish for professions classes, we are some like Spanish for business usually has textbooks that have these activities or Spanish for medical, but some of the other fields we deal with don't so much. And so maybe exploring with the students, okay, you are making these personalized vocab lists and then how, what are things you can do besides just, they all seem to make that um, automated flashcard thing with the, voc with the vocab, but like, here's, what are some ideas how you could engage with this for yourself, in addition to saying, okay, now how are we going to share as a class around this collective learning that we're doing alongside the content? Mm -hmm. And um, so I guess as I'm listening to all this, I guess I, helping them have ideas about how, how could you make this, and they have their own ideas or talking in class. Well, how could, I mean, it's like, not like they need us really to tell them, <laughs> what do you think you could do with this? What do you think you can do with it? I mean, they're, what is like, more like what are people doing with this right what are people doing with this and potentially for your classrooms what what do you consider uh like what could be like not okay to do for a class or what could be okay to do for a class or what can complement or supplement your learning journey versus oh now you're just typing in a question and copying and pasting that into and submitting that for homework right which is not what we want we ideally want to encourage them to use these for um more beneficial ways in more beneficial ways but yeah so I mean ultimately if you're a language instructor you're the expert right and if you're a learner you should always check with your instructor or a native speaker with all of these answers that AI is giving you because again these these technologies are not reasoning for themselves they're just kind of giving you the next logical uh, set you know word in a sequence for chat GPT or for copilot it's giving you sources but again they're coming from the internet and as we all know you can't trust everything that you find on the internet so for my on, on my end, I do think that there are great technologies to practice with or to find a good starting point. Certainly not perfect. Um, but I think, yeah, I think use you, you can you know you can use them with your expertise or together with your expertise to potentially um, have some fun exercises in class or to at least show students how, if they don't know already how they can use these for um to complement or supplement their learning. Um yeah, and a, a last note, I just wanted to note that, and we've talked about this, but these technologies might have different proficiency levels and different languages, right? So I know we've played with them today, but for people who maybe teach different languages, it might not be able to give all these answers or all of these um, exercises. But uh, again, not perfect. Um, anyway, any other last minute thoughts, questions? Want to make sure? Yeah, go for it. Um just as we're all engaging in these conversations and there's so much going on in the 
general press about saving time, eliminating jobs. Blah, 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 blah. And as educators, I think it's like super important, the distinction between process and product. Because so far I see a lot of the public conversation around AI as it's, it really, it just it quickly, you can just produce product so much faster. And um, for as educators, it's like, it's, and stu it's, it's about the process, right? Of the discovery you go through and the product, yeah, is something you turn in. So um, I think that it's really important that we all always be exploring for ourselves and for our students and particularly in foreign languages because for all that this can do and generate all these things, if you want let words to come out of your mouth, you have to get them to stay in your brain. And there's a process there and it's not just memorization, but you know, all of the engagement processes, even if you say, well, realistically speaking, as an immigration lawyer, I will never write an essay for publication about international law in Spanish. That's very realistic. Nevertheless, as a student in a Spanish for legal class, Sometimes writing something and struggling and writing at an intermediate high level, even though really what you're going to be doing is needing to use oral skills, is going to improve your oral skills. But it's so easy for them to think, well, why would I bother to try and write something? I, I would just have artificial intelligence write that if I had to, you know? And so I just, that's like, I think I'm really struggling with the loss of the understanding of process. And so that's what I just want to share. That's like my bandwagon or that I'm in my soapbox, I guess is the metaphor. <laughs> yeah, Judging no. me, what's the appropriate <laughs> <laughs> metaphor for my ranting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can give you an answer for that. Just kidding. Um, yeah, no. And I think a lot of us have those thoughts too, right? Like these can be helpful and can be a good starting point. However, like how much is too much or how, like, when does it constitute academic or when does it um, jeopardize academic integrity or when are we just you know too lazy to write an email and so we're just asking chat gpt to write an email for us instead of like writing it ourselves and so yeah i think these are uh, very important things to to continue to dialogue about and you know like i don't know that anybody knows what this is going to look like in 5 10 50 more years right mm -hmm. does anyone else have any thoughts on that Yeah, I attended a talk yesterday about kind of like the ethical uh, considerations of of using AI. And and yeah, I, I do think these things are on a lot of people's minds, right? Just like, when is it ethical? When is it not ethical? Like, when do we, where do we draw the line, et cetera? Um, so yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Um, all right, we only have a few minutes left. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. Uh, well, we want to thank you for coming. Uh, we are, uh, Lindsay will put a feedback survey in the chat, but I will also be sending a follow-up email, um, to you and to a few, uh, people who couldn't make it today, but were interested in having these materials. And so you'll get an email from me shortly with the feedback survey, with the slides. Um, and I wanted to take a second to say we have another workshop in a month, a month from today. Leah Powers from the French and Italian department and Audra McCorkle from, uh, who teaches ASL here at CU from the speech languages and hearing sciences department will be presenting on how to incorporate culture and social justice in uh, beginner language courses. So if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to mark your calendars. It'll be at 2 p.m. on the 7th. Um, and then my last slide here, I just have some references and some, you know, if you're interested in reading a little bit more, um, I have a few sources there. And again, this will all be included in that email that I will send here in a little bit. Um, if you have thoughts, questions, comments, feel free to stick around. If not, thank you so much for coming um, and we hope to see you again. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Ashna. Thank you. Thank you.